Rule 1. The Game Volleyball is a game played by two teams consisting of six players on a rectangular court separated into two areas by a net and using an inflated ball. One team serves the ball over the net, trying to make it land within the opponent's playing area. The receiving team attempts... Alright guys, just kidding. We all know how the volleyball game works, and that's why we're here. What we really don't think about rule number one too much when we think about the rules, but let's review some of the finer points of that rule as it starts off our rule book. Some quick points about the match. A match is played best three of five sets, meaning, obviously, a team has to win three sets with a maximum of five sets being played. Some schools in our area have junior varsity programs or even junior-junior varsity programs. Those matches are best two of three and sometimes three of three, depending on the school district and the teams. With all these sets being played, we need to manage our time effectively. One way of doing this is taking note of your set intervals. Remember, a set interval is the time between sets and it's a maximum of three minutes, unless it's an intermission for promotional or special recognition activities. That should have been announced by an athletic director or a coach prior to the pre-match conference. If we're having an intermission or a promotional activity, remember that it must take place between sets two and three and no longer than five minutes. Something that we don't think about too often is a coin toss during the pre-match conference. Since the home team has chosen their side of the court and bench, the visitor gets to call the results of the coin. Regardless who the winner is, their choice is serve or receive. If we get to a third or fifth deciding set, depending on the match, remember that the coin toss is now called by the home team and the choice is serve, receive, or side. Once they've made that choice, the opponent gets to choose the remaining choice. For instance, the home team wins the coin toss and they choose side, then the visitor gets to choose serve or receive. Here's a fun fact in Rule 1. It's actually in Section 3, labeled Scoring Points, and is Article 3. It reads, A loss of rally slash point is awarded each time a vacant position rotates to serve in the right back position. Vacant? I don't ever remember refing a match where I had a vacant position. However, in the rules, remember, a team must consist of at least six players to begin a match. But during the course of the match, if a team loses a player due to either injury, illness, or disqualification, they can continue with five players. That vacant position must rotate around, and when it rotates back to the service position, it's either a point or a loss of rally to the opponent. Let's talk about termination of a set. Obviously, through the normal course of play, when a team reaches 25 points or 15 points in a deciding set and has at least a two-point advantage, they are the winner of that set. If the leading team does not have a two-point advantage, play continues until there is one. We typically call that no cap. I've actually had matches, or rather sets, go to 38-36, and I've actually seen 42-40 before. Another way we terminate a set or a match is through forfeit. Now, we certainly don't like to see this happen, and it's rare, but it has happened. There are some specific scenarios that must take place in order for a match, not a set, to be declared a forfeit. The first would be if a team refuses to play when directed to do so by the first referee. This might be the team refusing to take the court at the beginning of the match, or maybe they're not coming out of a team huddle after a timeout and will not take the court. If a referee has disqualified a coach for unsporting conduct, that coach must be removed from the premises 
and if no authorized school personnel are present to assume the responsibility for the team, that too would be deemed a forfeit. If a disqualified player or coach continues to violate the conduct rules, that too could be deemed a forfeit. And remember, if a team has fewer than six players to start the match, they forfeit the set, not the match, and then can take up to two timeouts to try to find that sixth player. There's one last section in Rule 1 that I'd like to bring to your attention. It's Section 8, and I'll read it to avoid any confusion. The playing of music slash sound effects shall only be permitted prior to the start of the set, during warm-ups, during timeouts, between sets, and following the competition. And here's the best part. The use of artificial noisemakers shall be prohibited. That's a good rule to know, and you should always know exactly where that's at. Personally, I've dealt with drums, keys, air horns, tambourines, and even other whistles in some of my matches over the years.